Most of the people, they don't know the ranch. And, and we're talking about the flames uh, about three feet, four feet high. This plane was probably 10 feet. They are more than just the people who do the work. They would certainly didn't give up. So yeah, none of us will be giving up. I'm Debbie Brokaw Jackson, and I'm one of the owners of the ranch. My mother is still alive, and there are five of us children, and we all are owners. Jose and his wife live on the ranch. We live on the ranch, yeah. My wife called me and said, Jose, the, the, the fire, has got some fire. Where? She just came from the Stickle Park. Oh my gosh. All the families got out. <laughs> all the out. families got out. When she called me and said, you better get out. You better get out. I said, where'd I go? Go your mom or your daughter or somewhere, but you need to get out. And, and say, okay, we'll, we'll pick up the stuff. She, we, was, we was thinking about all the house gonna be burning. She picked up the, all the papers, important papers, you know, and, 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 and she left. The ranch is up Santa Paula Canyon, between Santa Paula and Ojai, across Santa Paula Creek, and it's about, how far is it from Stuckle Park? It's about a mile. Just a mile yeah, before yeah. Stuckle Park. So we were right at the beginning of the fire. I drove back to Santa Paula. While I was driving, I was um, thinking how they're gonna be, do it. I called everybody from our coworkers and told them be prepared, be, be, make sure be stay there so we meet in the, the ranch so we can plan. And that's how we start that, that night. We was watching because our uh, water system was down, our, our engine was, was down, so we, we wasn't much water left in the reservoir. And so we can't waste the water, we can't just turn on water by, like crazy. So we just, just tell them, well, we're going to plan it, I'm going to be watching how fast the, the fire came through us, and I'll let you guys know what time you, you start the water. Because I don't want to, I want the water just be soaking when the, this fire hit that. So, and that's exactly what we do. When we put it, water, fire pass through, our water's finish. The, the fire, it melt our surface pipes and, and that, and that's, and it's so our water irrigation it's, it's, was gone. So, but it was already past the fire. The fire started about 6.30, something like that. It was a big gusties. I was it's a big ranch, and there and there are a lot of areas where the fire can come in. Yeah. So it was, it was hard to keep track, and but I know I know that night it was fly, you know, because it, it was short night. It was very um, excess, you know. When you talk about strategy, the thing is that we have a fire strategy. Every year we prepare and we get all of the equipment together and we bring in extra people in case and train them and we figure out where everybody's going to be and what they should do. Completely useless in this case because the fire came so fast and there was so much wind and we couldn't get people in because the roads got, were blocked immediately. And so Jose had to come up with a new strategy on the fly. Yeah, it, this is the time you hurt your heart. What you what to do? This is and then, and my heart is saying you need to stay here. You need it. Save what you can save, but it was it was too much re, uh, re, uh, responsibility for me because all the crew was dependent on me, and they don't know they don't do they don't do anything if I don't say anything. If I if I say you need to go that hill and fight that they go, but I was very careful to say any words to these, these people. So we would do it just very uh, um, saved things and with percussion, you know, because then make sure they told them that we get together, say, listen, we don't want any heroes. We don't want any, anybody who right, tried to save nothing. Just save your lives first, and then we save whatever is around us, okay? But make, make sure, listen to me, and we will, I'll, I'll, I'll guide you guys. Don't do anything by yourself. And then but they understood. So they, they, they were, that's not what we do. Huge uh, burden. Yeah. We, we, but you uh, didn't make anyone stay. 
No, no, no. make him one stay. I just gonna go, 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 get prepared for, for that fire. And I and I and I told the, some one of the meetings we got the opportunity to get together and we went to the office because it was so dark we were lighting with a flashlight and I say, listen, if you any gotta feel feel scary, that you guys can free can go. You know, just just but if you guys need light to be um, uh, work together, we're gonna work in a safe way. We're not gonna be working like crazy. So we have to be working by an order, so in safe first, okay? So and then, and then, yeah, we, they, were, they were okay. I was, I was very pleased, all the people working all the four they do it. We're talking about the flames uh, about three feet, four feet high. This flame was probably 10 feet, so couldn't do anything. We socking around the houses, around the office, around so the structure, destruction, who, 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 who can keep, keep going, like an office, and Debbie's house, and, and Ellen's house, and my house, and, and other, other houses, and equipment. So that's what we was our priority to, to prevent and, and save it. We lose um, um, some ga um, garage and all office. The old office, which we had moved out of, it luckily. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, part of our fire strategy is that we put sprinklers on the roofs mm -hmm. of the, all these structures. We had just finished the week before the yeah, fire it, yeah. on some of them, and that is what saved it was, was them. Saved. And uh, the crew, and that was a strategy because you know there's the water system to figure out when to start that water on the roofs. Yeah. So that was a. A, a strategic decision that worked. Yeah. yeah. So we can, we can. I, I know everybody was using um, city water because this is from from city water, and we got a connection connection from city water and irrigation water. So I, um, we don't want to use it uh, like crazy because everybody was using water. Uh, everybody, um, they are using at the same line all our uh, all other growers. And we were in, in the same situation. I call Pete Fellini. He called me, Jose, you, you, you feel free. Use all the water you can. All your water is possible. And he says, he's gonna be, we're going to be turned around the well. But the problem is the power, it's, it's off. About immediately. 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 So that well, it's, it's by power. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so we, we ran out of pressure. We're not on water, so, and um, so that's why we changed our plan. We use uh, two-way radios, communicating right with me and other other our crew. When it was all no power, there's no way to recharge, and we have no communication <laughs> except me yeah, because I didn't know that part. Yeah, because me, my mind, I have in my truck. It's recharged by by 12 volts, so it was only me. And I say, well, just just charge from my truck. And it was charging real quick, quick charging, you know, so we can have a little bit left, in the, the, so we can talk. But all the communication we lose it. We lose it, the, the telephones because nobody can can recharge. The worst of it was at night, right? Yeah. But they were fighting that fire, twenty four hours, yeah. hard. And then we were, you were still putting out spot fires for ten days. For ten days. <laughs> ten yeah. days. It kept popping up again and we had to do patrols every night for more than for at least at least one week. Yeah, I think that was 10 days too. Yeah, yeah. And the you know the the thing about this whole story to me is that these guys we didn't tell them they had to go fight that fire. We were expecting them to save themselves. And they didn't and they they worked it was very humbling. They worked so hard, and when we got to the ranch, when my mother and I got to the ranch the next day, because we, we couldn't get back in, we finally got in. There was this little window where they let us in, then they closed the road again. We got in, and every one of those guys came up to us with tears in their eyes and apologized because they hadn't been able to save more. And you know, that is, that is a humbling experience. And we are so grateful to them. And everyone should be grateful to them because all of these, and it wasn't just us, it happened on many, many farms, which are around the cities. And I think that these guys saved 
a lot. They saved a lot of people's property. And that night, I needed, I was looking the, uh, how the ranch was burning. Say, how are you gonna do, how are you gonna do the next week? Which this, this next week, this tree's gonna need water. Well, and that night, I ordered hose. In the middle of fighting the fire? Yeah, I ordered hose. Um, and new irrigation hose. New irrigation hoses, because I knew it was gonna be melted from, from the fire. So I make a little time, saying, say, well, what, are gonna, what are we gonna do? Is it, uh, and I stay back and, and do some, some things to do. Like I order some fuel, I order some water, some uh, uh, the hoses and some parts, and with nobody, nobody been ordered before. So I buy like 100 rolls, just only, whole, only 100 rolls of hose they have available. I leave a message with that, with that salesperson. Uh, next morning he called me, uh, I, got, I got you order, he said, this will be here middle of the week. But we couldn't put it in because the, dirt, the soil was so hot, so we just tried to put it in quickly, and it's, and it's still melting that, that, that hose because, it's, because of the soil, is rocks and, and fire, things that it was still burning, so we don't put that right away. There were, there were I don't know how many times we talked. Oh, the whole night. But I was trying to be careful not to, I was trying not to call him too often because he was, I knew he was so busy, but so we were texting some and, yeah. and calling some, and there were points where he sounded a little panicky, and I kept saying, I think you should leave. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> he said, oh no, we're safe. We're in this place where, this newly planted place, which later burned, by the way. Yeah. But he told me he was safe. And I tried to get the fire, you know, there was no firefighters to be seen anywhere, and so I was trying to get firefighters in there. And then the worst part was he called, this was actually the next day, during the day, mid-morning, he called and said, your mom's house is gone. And so we spent, uh, my sister and I and my mom and my daughter, we were all together, and we spent about four hours processing this idea that everything was gone of my mom's. And my mom and dad had lived there for 30 years, something like that. And then he called and said, oh, it's still there. Yeah. But it was in gold, you know, it, there was wa there were flames, you, you couldn't cool. see it. Well, right, because it was, full, it was full of flames, that new office and, and the garage, and, and, and the eucalyptus around. And we, and we see from, from fire, say, oh gosh, Ellen's house is burning. We tried to get in with the, with the, with the, with the uh, truck, but the tractor, the, 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 the sheriff's tractor was burning big flames, like 20 feet tall flames. And, and we tried to go with the, with the water truck, put in water, and it was, we can't do anything. Because all around is burning. It's, and I was concerned about get fire from, from, the, uh, uh, from the water truck. It has an outside filled tanks. So I told these guys, better, better leave, because I don't want I, I, I don't want. I don't want a surprise. So later, later, we was make another turn. I was see more clear. Everything was burned except the house, because the house we turned it on the sprinkles and was dripping <laughs> a little bit of water. <laughs> yeah. Debbie called me one one day. Say, what do you need, Jose? I need to eat. I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I first went, I'm I'm not on the ranch. I'm hearing. Jose talk about this fire, and he basically said, at one point he said, all of Mupu is burning, which is part of the ranch. All of Mupu is burning, and another time he said, everything there in Chiravo is, you know, your mom's house, everything there is burning, and so I had this picture in my mind of it just being flattened. When we got there, I, was th I thought, oh, that's not so bad. The trees are all still there. You know, that's not yeah. so bad. We don't know which direction we should go. We have, I don't have much, I don't have experience and burning trees like, like this time. So we didn't know, I just said, well, um, we gotta go through priorities, you know, like uh, good trees, that's the same trees, gotta be, have a potential for production in the future. We gotta be treated, prioritize those trees. And for other trees, that's, it's gonna be like a hospital, like a hospital, like a bad- Triage. Yeah, yeah, like a dead people, just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that the, the injury people, and, and, and so uh, that's what we do, and that's what we try to do, and we're still doing. You're still doing. As time goes by, and those trees get dark, browner and browner and browner, it starts looking pretty bad. 
but you don't know for a long time. So we've just done our first pretty good, I think we're feeling pretty good about the validity of this estimate, and we think we lost about 60 acres. That's about 40% of our planting. It's mostly avocados. We lost a few other things, but it's mostly avocados. And then we lost some structures and some equipment and a lot of all of our irrigation, yeah. a lot of our flood control. That adds up to a lot of money. But the, the big loss is the production in the few years to come. Jose worked with my dad for years and years and years, and that ranch was my dad's baby. And he planted all kinds of stuff in all kinds of strange places. And one of the things he did was every time they would make a planting and they would make a fire break around the planting is he would look at that beautiful bare ground and say, let's just plant that. <laughs> so we didn't have good fire breaks. And avocado trees, we've certainly learned, l burn better than anything else that we grow. We should keep clean, bigger um, fire break not leaf litter. Leaf litter around. around the edges. Because it's, in this situation, it's, it's, not, not, it's not working. Maybe it's not work even if you have, if you have fire breaks. But at least, at least it's not, it not started quickly. At least it's going to be start from the middle. And if it starts from the middle, it's, it's, it's an amber, it's going to start slow. But if you don't, you don't, if you don't have fire break, it's going to start fast. And you going to give you less chance to. To, to, to control it. We don't have to do exactly what we've always done in the past. This, in a lot of ways, it, this, you could look at this. You could look at this as an opportunity because we, can, we don't have to replant to all avocados. We can look and think about other, other crops. We can think about other ways of uh, you know, planting. We can, we can do all kinds of different things. We just have to figure out. We just have to come up with what those might be. We're not there yet. We're beginning to think about that. And then after the fire, following day, they, things had calmed down a little bit. You weren't, we weren't, you weren't actively trying to keep everything from burning down. You were mopping up, right. mostly. But the road had gotten, had been closed again. And you know, we, there, we have a bigger crew than those six people. So there were another five people, four people, trying to come to work. And they couldn't <clears throat> get through the blockade. So. They parked, and they walked across the creek so they could get to work, so they could help. Yeah. And then for the next month, at least, people were working seven days a week because we had to get that irrigation back in because we're still, you know, still dry, still windy, still putting out fires, yeah. still trying to save what we can. And then one day, this one, this also brought, brought tears to my eyes. One day they mm -hmm. came to Jose and said, "We don't want to get paid overtime." Um, because you, you, can, you should tell that story. Yeah. What they, they told me, you know, they say, um, uh, are we going to be working tomorrow, which is what, Saturday? I said, yes. And what about Sunday? No, Sunday, no. Sunday, we we'll just take off. No, we can go to work su Sunday. Tell Debbie, tell Ellen, we can work Sunday with no pay overtime, even no pay, no pay anything. Just, just, just gonna do it and ourselves. We didn't, we didn't let them do that, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> it certainly reminded us, we the owners, of how much we rely and how valuable our workforce is. It, the, the, they are more than just the people who do the work. We had a meeting with them the day after the fire, I think. We brought everybody together. And they said things like, we're going to make this place better than it was before. They certainly didn't give up. So yeah, none of us will be giving up. Mm -hmm.